Hey guys, good morning. It's the Crypto Cowboy. It's about 8.45 here Chicago time um, on the 15th of August 2019. Uh, okay, so uh, Bitcoin made some uh, new lows overnight here and uh, we've gone as low as about 94.90 um, into this crypto compare data feed. So possibly other platforms had different uh, you know price points but uh nevertheless um the idea is that we are pulling back and um we seem to at least for now found a um temporary low up here and um uh, not sure if you know the structure is fully complete yet or not but um i want to give it the benefit of the doubt and you know not call anything over here uh before it's really over you know the markets have a way to to trick us into believing okay we found the low and then they go a little bit lower so uh kind of we always have to be prepared for that and the way i look at it it's um and i've gotten a question here in the telegram from somebody um about how do you even count this because this is where we're all all, all we're struggling with right i mean as, as you know elliot wave um, throw us some curveballs sometimes and it's like how do you make this um, I mean the the beautiful count would have been to have another leg up here to complete and to exhaust this triangle right and then this wave B or X or whatever this was uh, should have gone up here and then we would have made new lows now remember I've said before the markets will trick you into these triangles and sometimes they'll fail all they start having different counts on it so you should never hang your head on a triangle just because you know it's an ascending triangle or whatever it is you know they can quickly reverse on you by by employing a different count so uh, you know this is where Elliott wave sometimes people say it's subjective but it's actually it's actually not you just have to uh, prepare yourself for uh, whatever happens okay and then you have to adjust your count because the market is never wrong we are wrong okay and then we have to find a way um, you know to count the waves so um, it can come up to the correct uh, um, to the correct wave count and sometimes this will only be visible after time passes right after couple of days pass after the structures show up and they're complete then you say ah I think this is what it was and and you know by that time if you're not if you're not out of the market when you're wrong or if you're um, you know not open uh, you will you will get uh, you will get hurt so um, the way you count this so first of all let's go and say that we are still developing the sea lag in this larger wave too and i'm going to go to the six hour and just start from there because i've, I've mentioned this a couple of times so this is in the double combo scenario where we have this wx and then we're doing an a b and a full-blown c wave which are really aggressive all the way down to complete this y right and for this you have a five wave move up in a you have a three wave move up in b and then you have this move down in c so a uh, very simple zigzag that will come down here right so um, you would have for that you need to complete this third wave structure that's this one here now this wave three green it's extremely extended so I'm not sure if this is even the correct one but it doesn't matter I'm just gonna let the market um, work itself down here and the moment we'll have more corrections here then we'll be able to either eliminate some of the sub waves or just condensate them um, into a complete structure before this is complete the markets are not just gonna you know from here you know all of a sudden shoot up here uh, you know three four thousand points it doesn't just happen like that and if it does you know so be it but it's you know more often than not we need to create um, a base and we need to create a movement here um, you know to have to have the complete structure so here is how I'm counting this and if I'm go from a six hour so let's say that you have a one two one two one two then you still got to complete this fourth wave which if I go to a lower time frame this should be probably a um, more than not a triangle and usually try I mean usually fourth waves retrace anywhere uh, I mean the most common relationship for the fourth wave versus a third wave it's about 38.2 uh, percent and then we should do another five another four another five another four and another five right now like I said we might be you know um, overzealous here in so many threes and fours uh, but the market will, will arrange itself so if I go to a three hour 
uh, you will see kind of one I see even better to a one hour. This is one kind of what I mean when I say a triangle, right? I think you have a zigzag here in a wave two, and then this should be a triangle. So you go in an A, B, C, D, E for four, and then come back down. So just pay attention um, to the reactions from here. Um, and the way you count, I think the question was, how do you count this as a wave one? So for that to happen, I mean, it, it's extremely, it's extremely painful to do this, uh, but you got to find it because, you know, the most common look here, it's a three wave move. If I were to eliminate this, you know, this look here, right, you would say, okay, this is a one, two, three. And then it's an ABC move, right? The most common relation was that a, tri a triangle. So if I go back, and if I go down to a 10 minute chart, I'm going to have to go all the way back there. Sorry. All right. So this is how you count that. You have a wave one, two, three, four, five in wave one. Then you have a zigzag in two, A, B, C. Okay. And now you have this one, two, three, four, five, somewhere here, right? It's a third wave because it's larger. Okay. And then you have a fourth wave and then you have a very small fifth wave. Now, this wave four compared with this wave two, yeah, they're disproportionate. Uh, but this is how you get a wave one. And uh, if that's what the market did, that's what it did. So, you know, the, the, you can argue as much as you want. The market still moved lower. So this is this is how you come up with an interpretation where this is a wave one. And then this is a wave two. You go in ABC in two. And then you have another one in one here. One, two, three, four, five for a wave one. You have a larger wave two, and I'm going to go to a 45 minute, make it visible. So you have one, two, three, four, five in one, two. You have one A, B, C in two. Okay. And then you have another one in one, one, two, three, four, five in one, wave two. You're completing this third wave. Okay. Now you're doing the fourth and so on. So this is the best that I have for this interpretation. Um, and I'm going to go back to the six hour. And just kind of have an, just an overall view up here. So basically what we're looking for where you have, you know, a C versus A. So let's say that the C wave um, compared with this A wave, they will reach equality at about 8,500, 84, 89 down here, right? So that's what I'm saying. The substructures up here, they can be a little bit messy. And, you know, if we're noticing that we're getting an impulse wave from these levels, then uh, that means that we probably are finding a low here. Um, and then we have to count an impulsive wave up, a retracement, and then see how the market reacts and start looking aggressively towards the top side. Uh, if the market pulls lower, uh, towards the bottom of the channel, then, you know, just based on it, just based on it, just based on a look, right? I, I don't, ha I don't have to have any magical tools, you know, but I can just take and say, okay, this is the angle of the descent here, right? This is a little bit more aggressive. And then this is what you're going to be getting down here. Right. And usually these last waves are not as impulsive, are not as aggressive because the market, um, you know, sells, but it sells with a little bit more, you know, less conviction. So you can see the angle of descent here that is probably going to follow this line. So uh, let me go to the next chart here and I'm going to save this. And then this is uh, the triple combo scenario. And I'm going to go to a six hour because it's a little cleaner. And uh, you will see if the more, okay, perfect. So it's a W, X, Y, and then you have, and you notice here, right? This, this move here, you can make it as a third, three wave move, not a five wave move, uh, because the market could also be A, B, C, okay? W, X, Y, X, A, B, C, and X. And now you're doing a larger A, B, C down. And again, this is that 100% line. Uh, we already passed through it. And, you know, the ideal kind of, uh, you know, equality between four and two, you know, comes at the 161.8 here. And so that's in September 8th. So if the market wants to correct until there, um, you know, please have at it. But this would be a first wave A. So you're supposed to have a zigzag into the Z lag. Uh, we're still doing this one, two, one, two, three, four, five, four, five for A. So this A probably not complete yet, just like it's the case back here. And then, uh, we're getting a pullback into a wave B. Now you notice that that pullback, it won't be that aggressive in this scenario. And uh, then you would get a sharp drop in a wave C. That's when everybody will get bearish and say, okay, this is the end of the crypto world. And um, then it's time to load up longs for the top side.
Okay, so um, somebody asked me if I see anything bullish in here. No, not right now. The market still needs to work itself out. And for me to convince me that uh, all these counts are wrong and we're embarking on a bullish scenario right away, uh, we would have to cross this line up here, right? So I would want to see the market above 11,500. Okay, I want to see the market start breaking this trend line and moving up here. And then we can talk about, you know, a completed move, maybe a one, two, one, two, um, and then start shooting up higher. Yeah. But I don't want to force the counts and I don't want to dream about it. I want to trade and I want to, um, analyze exactly what's in front of me. And I want to give myself, um, the best chances of being correct in getting the right direction into what we have. Okay. So, uh, throw the bias out the window and uh, focus on the price action. And if the market needs to correct, let's let it correct before it starts getting impulsive. Okay, there was a chance here of it to get impulsive. But like I've said, those X waves are very tricky. They make everybody believe that we're going to go up higher and then they don't. And then you get a sharp move in the other direction for a complex correction. And we've been talking about this. Comp if you watch my updates on TradingView, we've been talking about the possibility of this complex correction ever since the middle of June, say, okay, we're going to correct. We're going to get to the middle of August and we're still going to be correcting. So just, um, you know, just throwing it out there. If you guys have any other questions, leave them in the, in the room or any charts or any ideas, uh, you know, feel free to talk about what you want. All right. Talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye.